A UK team of structural and civil engineers is travelling to the earthquake zone in Turkey to assess why so many buildings collapsed. Turkish engineers who are already on the ground have provided them with proof of inferior building materials being used in construction. The team will produce a report in a matter of weeks designed to improve seismic safety once the area is eventually rebuilt. Our science editor, Rebecca Morell, has more. The devastation of last month's earthquake. More than 50,000 people lost their lives as buildings collapsed in the biggest earthquake to hit the region in almost a century. Now an investigation is beginning to try and find some answers amongst the wreckage. So how many buildings did you actually end up surveying as a team? Professor Emily So is leading the Earthquake Engineering Field Investigation Team, or EFIT. Structural engineers in the UK and Turkey are working together to assess the damage. She's been getting the latest update from Tuche Tetik, who's been to Adiyaman. Tuche has been taking some samples of concrete and has found large pebbles embedded in it. Do you think they got these aggregates locally because it's got lots of rivers around? Yeah, uh, all of them taken from the river. The river pebbles shouldn't be there. They weaken the structure. She's also found some steel bars are smooth instead of ridged, which means the concrete doesn't cling to them, again reducing the strength. This kind of in-depth analysis can only be done by having experts on the ground. It's important to get the full picture rather than just looking at a snapshot of a single asset or a single building because the successes of the ones that are still intact and perform perfectly well is as important as its neighbours that have collapsed and actually having that distribution and having that um, overview is, a, it's, is really key to what we do and what we can learn from this earthquake. But the collapse of some buildings isn't because of poor construction. In some areas, the ground movement was so great, it exceeded what the buildings had been designed to withstand. And in others, a process called liquefaction turns the ground into a heavy fluid, like very wet sand. A telltale sign of this is a building that's toppled over. This building on the other... At the engineering company, Arup, computer simulations show why some buildings fail. We're starting to see more movement in the columns, this part of the building's moving more, the connection with the central core has failed, that part has collapsed, this part has collapsed. The building has formed really, really badly. But buildings can be designed to withstand seismic events. We can see the performance of the columns and the beams and the floors and the ceilings, and everything remains intact, so that's a clean bill of health. The basic design principle is to allow some form of damage within the building. That damage absorbs the energy of the earthquake, means the building will move a little bit more, uh, things will be cracked, but generally the building will survive. And that, that's the sort of the baseline. How do you construct buildings in an earthquake zone? The vertical columns should be stronger than the horizontal beams. It means the upper stories are supported, so you don't get what's called pancaking, where one layer collapses on top of another. Dampers can be added too. They act like shock absorbers as the building sways to and fro. And rubber bearings can be fitted underneath the building. They absorb the energy of the earthquake so it doesn't transfer to the structure above. But all of this costs money. And retrofitting an older building can be even more expensive. With so much destruction, there's a huge task ahead. It will take years of careful planning to rebuild. The hope is that the findings of this investigation will ensure this kind of devastation is not seen again. Rebecca Morell, BBC News.